Glass polis. I don't know how to read this. Guys, do you know where we are? Quick, pause the video, comment down below if you know what language this is and you think you know where we are. Could you imagine eating an eight patty burger? What about an eight patty burger with a chili jam or chili jelly on it and 24 slices of cheese? That is what we are going to try to do today. And guess what? We only have about four minutes. Yes, so today we are gonna be in Port Talbot, Wales, everybody. Yes, actually in the United Kingdom at a restaurant called The Burger Boy doing a crazy burger challenge called the Beast Burger. So for this challenge, we have just over four minutes to beat the record in order to get the burger for free. It is a 20 pound price on it, and that's about it. I'm gonna give you the rest of the details and more specifics, but a eight patty burger, 24 slices of cheese, and a spicy pepper jelly in four minutes. So that's absolutely crazy. This goes fun, it's eats food. All right, everybody, so here we are with the challenge. Uh, it is, I mean, like, so what it is, is it is 2.2 pounds of beef, 24 slices of cheese, which is nuts. And then it does have their spicy kind of pepper jelly on it. Um, and I think some ketchup as well. So like we said, the difficulty of this challenge is the record is, you know, four minutes, whatever seconds. Let me see it, 4.15, 4.15. So we do have to actually beat that time. I'm a little worried. Um, I already ate today, but that being said, it should be pretty good. So that's about that. I mean, I'm just gonna shut up and get started here momentarily. I already have ketchup all over me. And uh, what is the, what's the value of this, my friend? Uh, 20 pounds. 22? 20. 20, and 20 pounds if we were to fail. So wish us luck, guys. Lots of cheese, lots of beef. Let's get started here just momentarily. Wish us luck, everybody. Four minutes, 15 seconds. Not a lot of time. So how about we get a rockin' and a rollin'. Let's say the count of five, four, three, two, one, let's eat. Very tasty. That chili sauce is good. Gotta be proper, guys. It's stuck to the paper. Here we go. Woo! Man. Still delicious. Ketchup? Thank you. No doubt.
everybody. Thank you, thank you. Two minutes, 25 seconds, guys. Now the new record. They wanted me to crush it. Normally, I, you know, maybe leave a little closer to four minutes, but they wanted to kind of see me hit it. That was good, though. I actually, I actually really enjoyed it. Believe it or not, I had enough time to use my ketchup, get in some of my sodas, my Pepsi Max, or fizzies, excuse me, from the UK. Not sponsored yet, but feel free to sponsor me Pepsi or Coke. I'll take a sponsorship. Excuse me, compliments to the chef. But everybody, again, huge thanks to the Burger Boys here for having a good meal for free. It's pretty cool. Did you get a t-shirt? Yeah, you got a t-shirt. And a t-shirt. Pretty cool. Um, but yeah, really, really delicious. I love the smash burgers they do here. It really is like a traditional style smash burger. Super heavy, super greasy, in all the best ways, cooked on the high heat. I would say that that bottom core was super hot. Definitely scorched the roof of my mouth, but I got no complaints. It was very, very delicious. So, yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely a quick one, but Wales has been a dream. It's been super cool. Uh, thank you, Leah, for being my official timer for today and hype woman. And uh, that, everybody. That's about that. Till next time. Say happy, happy, happy. In, the, in the words of, of, of the, the, uh, the other, like, comment, subscribe. And now let's have a lovely day, guys. Hey, everyone, real quick, one thing to this video being Surfshark VPN, my preferred virtual private network. I've been using them for years. It's in limited devices, so I have it on my phone, my computer. It helps me to access public Wi-Fi networks safely, yes, so I can use internet anywhere without having to worry about my data getting stolen. I use it for international shopping to save money. I also use it to access different regional content through things like Disney+. Plus. Surfshark also comes with a money-back guarantee, so you literally have nothing to lose. So right now you can actually get 83% off and three months free. Yes, 83% off and three months free by using the link down below, surfshark.deals forward slash Joel H. So check out surfshark.deals forward slash Joel H today to protect your data and try Surfshark today. And while I'm kind of in the downtown with a little bit of time, I'm going to check out what they call Cardiff Bay, which is not nest like it is a bay. It's actually a river, um, but they have a whole little like Ferris wheel kind of carnival ish down here. Interesting thing here, they have fabulous Welsh cakes. I don't know what a Welsh cake is, but it sure smells good. But I'm gonna go ask them because it sure smells delicious. And this is this is what it looks like. It looks kind of like a pancake. It looks like there's like raisins or something in it. Excuse me. What is a Welsh cake? Uh, a bit like a scone or a shortbread. Like a scone or a shortbread? Yeah. Like fried? No, griddles. Griddle. We don't use any oil on the cool. griddle, no. Well, they sure smell good. Is it ra raisins in it? Sultanas we use. Cool. Thank you so much. I'm not going to get one now. I have food to be eating later. Um, real early in the day here. Oh my gosh, that is really close on my face. The other way, the other way. Real early in the day here. I feel like I'm just waking up. Uh, anyway. But uh, yeah, let's go see what this is all about. Only a little bit of time. I want to go see a uh, castle. So let's have some fun. All right, so right in the water. It is very, 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 very pretty. It is very busy. It's very much done up. Like, uh, you know, I will say modernized, touristy kind of thing. But I do like it. I mean, as you can tell, there is no shortage of people. Like, I obviously want a great big teddy bear. No shortage of people down here on a day like today. This is the bank holiday. So we have, I'm sure while there's some tourists like myself, we have lots of locals down here as well, enjoying this beautiful summer weather while it lasts. And of course, this lovely, lovely downtown. There's the, uh, the Ferris wheel. And again, this is the actual bay, which is cool. Oh, that's a nice, that's a really cool site. Look straight over there, like a great big cliff. Interesting. Yeah, this is gorgeous. I like it. I'm glad I came down here. So this is a pretty good uh, kind of vantage point to see everything. So we have the Ferris wheel behind me. We have this big building. I don't know. I don't know if it's a state building or a church, but that's like a, that's in all the pictures. That's a very well-known building. Behind me we have the Midway. So like the carnival kind of thing. Depends what you call it. Some people call it you know a fair, carnival, Midway. So they have like the little rides this weekend. They also have the prizes, and then behind me. They do have boat tours, which I would have loved to have done, and I and I was told to do, and it's very affordable. I think it was uh, maybe like eight, eight, or eight pound, eight, 10 pound. The only thing is I don't, if, well, I'd have to pick either the boat, the, the tour of the bay, or the castle. So I think I'm gonna choose the castle. I, I mean, 
Don't be wrong, this bay is gorgeous. I'm so glad I saw it. But I can do bays in North America. I can't really do castles. So I think that's probably the better choice. With the ferry this weekend, they also have lots of craft vendors. There are food vendors, of course. Uh, really kind of to make this midway experience. But it's pretty, it's pretty, it, basically what we saw up on the, uh, the bridge is pretty much what it is, what it is. I mean, it's cool. And some, and people are actually winning. I mean, I've seen lots of people with these great big octopi or octopuses. But ultimately, I'm, uh, I'm not here to try my luck and I couldn't take one of these home even if I was to win, so. Let's, uh, I think, I think uh, that this is really cool. I'm glad I came down here. Um, and hey, what a good time to be here. I mean, a cool event, right? So I gotta see Welsh, or Cardiff Bay, I guess, in the full Welsh and good spirit. I don't know, so we made it to Castle Cork, or I'm gonna try to pronounce it. Castle Cach. There's my, my best Welsh pronunciation. C-O-C-H pronounced Cork. Look at this thing, everybody. This is truly stunning. So this is also known as the Red Castle. And essentially, the story behind it, or the literal description is it's like, you know, what do you, uh, you know, what do you get when you combine basically infinite unruly wealth with a architect of like extreme imagination? Apparently Castle Cork or the Red Castle, which is supposed to have extravagant rooms, buildings. This is definitely newer. This is not like a 13th century castle. I think it's 19th century, we'll clarify here. I don't know if you can see, but beautiful, beautiful view also of Cardiff and uh, the surrounding area. Um, this is also really close to um, Carfilly. Uh, the other uh, castle we saw. Maybe this is even Car Philly we're overlooking. I don't know, but look at this. So uh, let's head on in. The mission is about eight, eight or nine pound. And let's see what this is all about. This is gorgeous though. Wow. I mean, already you can tell this is much newer, very well kept, and just pretty so let's see uh smaller of course but let's see what it has to offer all right so we just got in the first room first off shout out to this system so this is a little audio system you can get it's basically a tour so you enter a room they have this like little green thing you point it you press a button and then it like gives you the info you listen to it all right so before you even get the history of this room i just found out so this first tower and part of this actually was dating back to the 13th century it was a medieval castle However, they figured in the 14th century, it was badly damaged and actually basically abandoned and laid ruined until uh, more or less like the 1800s, uh, the 1870s, when uh, Lord Bute, who actually was the owners of the Cardiff Castle, which we saw in a previous video. If you didn't see that, go check that out. That was a crazy thing himself. Like just the richest, craziest family ever. That was like their dream home and like a tourist, like vacation home. This he actually took and was made like a fantasy. Like they call this like a fairy tale fantasy castle. So that's actually the, the real history of it up to this point. Now let's learn about this room, which is very cool. I mean, like literally it is basically, so while there was like fairy tale emblems and some like things like that at Cardiff Castle, this one was a like, complete fantasy. I mean, just look at this. It is shocking. Um, all the detail and everything. So let's learn about this. Here we go. Okay, so more or less history of this room. This is the banquet hall. This is where they would dine. They figure actually the main function of this whole castle was just to throw parties. And this room is based around St. Lucius. I believe this was his name. Um, who's that guy up there? Um, and... I forget what they just said, but he was a important uh, kind of Christian uh, or ca a religious figure. Um, so now let's learn about the next room. Wow, look at this. Crazy. 
actually here, it's still talking about this room. <laughs> so they're saying how um, this was painted to look like stone. And saying this is a very common thing. Decorative stones on the wall. Interesting. And then the Burgess designed these benches and kind of a lot of these other things. Interesting. All right, so this is what they call the drawing room and really you got to take time to even just absorb what is all going on here. This is literally like out of a fairy tale. So much decoration, it is crazy. Uh, the general of it, so they have like plants all down here on paint on, this is on real gold. And then the animals are apparently reenacting like Aesop's fables. Obviously you have lots of different pictures of like actual people, a crazy, crazy fireplace. Look at that, there's absolutely like just like, it's breathtaking. And then the birds and the stars and everything on the ceiling, that's like gold, which is nuts. That's the sun. Look at the chandelier. This might be the craziest chandelier ever. I don't know if you got, you guys can't see it totally, but it's like such wooden decorative, like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> this is nuts. <laughs> Then we have Lord Butte's bedroom, which if you watch the other video where we go to Cardiff Castle, is incredibly similar looking to his kind of bedroom or whatever room he had over there. So interesting, um, other points they mentioned, just like this was quite a humble room. Um, it was originally supposed to be above the drawing room, but with that big uh, dome, they ch had to change it. They uh, noted this similar kind of, you know, fake, brick drawings, and uh, it's pretty cool. Lots of uh, crazy woodwork in this uh, fireplace. Also hedgehogs, rabbits, beavers, or rats. Yeah, interesting. Here we have Lady Butte's bedroom, which is way bigger, way more grand, way more gold, way more just like insanity. Um, they said basically it is a mix of Far Eastern and Middle Eastern uh, kind of design. A little bit of romantic touch with this fireplace. And that's pretty much the majority. Apparently they also did not spend basically any time here. Like they literally visited, sounded like once or twice and that was it. And then fun fact, um, these monkeys up here, apparently monkeys back in that time they were very suggestive. So this was like kind of a little scandalous to have monkeys all over. And uh, yeah, mirrors up the top, beautiful. Okay, then in a attempt, because they were remodeling or modeling after the original medieval castle, this actually is the, the, the um, like the iron, you know, gate that you can, you know, drop, like raise and lower. Um, and they had put this in, this is called a murder hole. That's like where they, you know, in medieval times would drop rocks and stuff. But this was never used in the like 19th century. This is all just cosmetic, just basically for fun. Note to self, my North American GI track was not prepared for the richness of a full English breakfast. I don't know how you guys do it. Oh my gosh, that thing is working through me. And then up on the towers, which is pretty cool, they have these like swinging doorways. And, uh, um, maybe I can't open it. Maybe not, anyway, but you can open them all the way up to get a better view, which is pretty cool. And they have the little slits. Um, of course, if they had these open, it'd be a little bit, you know, a little bit more better review, but I can understand why, security reasons. Uh, so that's interesting. This is just a bit of a walk around. Uh, hoping to find some more of the informational pieces here. Here we have another tower, which apparently was connected to a chapel, although the chapel had been destroyed in the late 1800s. But these are the original stained glass windows that were in the chapel, which is pretty impressive. I mean, just like the artwork in them and to think, you know, even that these are what, let's say 150, 140 years old. Pretty cool. 
And I like this view exceptionally. This just looks like, cause it looks like it's straight like a fairy tale. Like, it's like you know, something you see like on a little Red Riding Hood or some witch's house. And then just, you know, it looks cool. I do like it. I mean, they definitely got the whole fairy tale aspect down. Like, looks like Harry Potter or Disneyland or something. Here we have what is the kitchen. And then it would pass over into the dining room. So it's pretty straightforward. And then we have a stairwell here with an arrow, so we'll go up here. And here we have the children's room, which was used not only to house the children, but also to isolate people if they were sick. So that's pretty interesting. So this is cool. These are actual photos um, of it prior to its 1870 restoration. So it really was, you know, basically in ruin, which is pretty crazy to think about, you know, obviously to what it is today. And crazy that you even have photos back then. And I guess uh, this is also a well that was used uh, in the medieval times that they restored in the 1800s. And uh, the castle here, um, they mentioned it had been used on a number of different uh, TV shows and movies, um, a lot of night movies, and most recently being Doctor Who. Uh, I'm sure this is one of their shows right now. I don't know which this is. I'm assuming this is... I don't know what it is. Anyway, Doctor Who and a few other recent TV shows have been filmed here. This is cool. So this is actually origi the original dungeon of the medieval um, era, so like the 1300s. So this was actually used. One thing which is, is interesting is they did have to replace the roof. So if you look, like, this is original medieval stone, which is like, you know, let's say 800 years old, seven, 800 years old, and then the new brick. So you can see a difference. So there's this other room which they call the cellar, but it actually is, Again, like original medieval. So original medieval rock, and here it was just painted white. But this is an another one of the like few actually standing uh, medieval rooms. So that was Castle Cork. It was cool. I gotta say, I think my favorite castles are the ones that did have some kind of either e-tour available or a in-person guided tour. I do think that's kind of just like a key fixture. When you get the history, the information about it just makes it so much, you know, more real and sticking, you know what I mean? So yeah, I got to see, uh, I guess it'd be three castles in Wales, which is pretty cool. We saw one in Ireland, Northern Ireland saw one in well we visually saw one in scotland we couldn't get into edinburgh's castle and i believe we saw one or two in britain like in the actual uk like mainland uk britain 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 that's correct so yeah guys castles are cool they're everywhere here and i liked it so thank you uk